Israeli apartheid, but also to uh, the closely and materially related uh, criminalization of undocumented immigrants in the United States and the militarization of the U.S.-Mexico border. Well, I think those are really extremely important and worthy projects, and um, I don't know if, if I am the one to say what I think the role is or even should be. I don't think I am. I think I'm, I'm learning. I've been really impressed by the um, anarchist mobilizations. I have great solidarity with the, um, uh, the, the struggle to decriminalize undocumented populations, whether or not they're working. A lot of them are not working. Uh, a lot of, some a lot of them are, um, and um, and certainly also the militarization of the U.S. Mexico border, which is I think in working in tandem with the militarization of our prison system. Yeah. So there are many new sites of militarization. Um, uh, I would include airports, um, and um, uh, and and I think that these are really these are these are crucial actions. I, I'm not sure. Um, uh, what more I can say, except that it seems to me that some of the the rallies, especially here on uh, May 1st in Los Angeles, there was a major rally, which included, by the way, an impressive queer contingent um, um, for um, the decriminalization of undocumented populations in California. And, um, and that strikes me as... Um, as a crucial issue, um, one, one has to wonder, as I think I've written about before, um, what kind of uh, rights of assembly are being uh, asserted at that moment when those without any existing legal rights uh, do assemble and do, um, do ask uh, and demand um, for the decriminalization of their, of their lives. Um, uh, I, I find that exercise of freedom to be crucial. It's an exercise of freedom that's collective, that's based on um, certain uh, important uh, uh, modes of resistance on the left that's, um, uh, that's using um, the power of assembly and of mass assembly in particular to affect radical political change. And as far as I'm concerned, that's precisely the kind of upsurge of um, of, of collective social actions that, um, that, are, that are against um, uh, state, um, uh, state power and the criminalizing power of the state and that are asserting rights um, without having the legal entitlement to do so. Um, I think we have to ask how, how is that exercise of freedom possible, what makes it possible and what is its meaning. And I think their um, anarchists have a lot to tell us. Um, they've been involved in such struggles. Um, they make such struggles possible. And they also show us that radical action outside the terms of the official law is not only possible, but necessary. Um, what, yeah, thank, thank you. One last, one last question. So there was a strange noise. It sounded like we're all in a plane for a few minutes there. But we, we heard everything was audible. So one last question, please. Um, I just wanted, to a just wanted to ask, given the discussion which you alluded to and Richard Falk wrote about discussing the legitimacy wars, especially emerging out of Operation Cast Lee, and also given the questionable um, issue of legitimacy of anarchism uh, more generally, I wonder how the discussion of anarchism and Israel-Palestine, especially the Palestinian resistance, boosts or impacts the legit legitimacy of the resistance, or what impacts you see this having, whether it's... Let's see if I understand you. Do you, do you. Are you asking about the legitimacy of anarchism, or are you asking whether anarchist involvement in anti-occupation politics threatens or, or supports the legitimacy of those projects? I think just going off this comment that you made about um, in Tel Aviv, the way that, you know, given the legitimacy of, uh, the legitimacy wars that are going on between, you know, after Operation Kessler that, that Richard Falk, um, wrote about and, and this whole thing that's going on um, regarding legitimacy and as well as the legitimacy of anarchism more generally. Okay, the legitimacy of, of, of talking about anarchism or calling it anarchism or, or using even the term anarchism. 
And is it because you have some doubts about that legitimacy? <laughs> um, I don't, but I've heard a lot of critiques and it's just called into question in my mind. And how that then either positively or negatively impacts the Palestinian resistance specifically, I think. You know, you know what's, what's, what is your idea of how that's going to impact the resistance in Palestine specifically, Palestinian resistance? Um, there, there are so many issues here. I mean, there's, there's the question of the legitimacy of the state of Israel. And, um, and maybe that's the way to answer your question. Um, uh, Israel is suffering a legitimation crisis. Right. Um, there's no doubt about it. Right. I think there was a published RAND report which talked about the various ways in which its, its legitimacy as a state has been called into question. And, um, and you're also right to point to Richard Falk's terribly important uh, commentary on this issue. Um, and I think um, when, when anarchists stop the wall or when they, um, they actually seek to stop a military operation um, or to disrupt the militarization of the checkpoint, um, uh, they are calling into question the legitimacy of that state apparatus to extend itself militarily in the ways in which it's doing. So it's an effort to stop a certain kind of militarization um, under conditions in which um, that state is gaining its legitimacy through heightened modes of militarization. Okay, so it is a delegitimating structure in that way. It's countering the legitimacy of the state as the state invokes that legitimacy as it expands and as it exercises um, uh, more, more brutal and, and devastating forms of military control. Um, um, now, there are those who would say, but can it furnish um, uh, a new basis for um, legitimacy? Or maybe it's considered illegitimate as a mode of action. Well, I think what we actually need is for the current um, uh, structures that are producing legitimacy in the state of Israel to come down, and that includes that includes the wall. It actually includes, in my view, um, uh, its regulations on citizenship as well. Um, and um, so, so at this point in the struggle, the point is to call that legitimation into crisis. When I um, was in Palestine last year and talked to people about the anarchists, what I found was um, great respect for what they did when I spoke to people at, Sh at Sheikh Jarrah, um, uh, Palestinians whose homes had either been taken away or were in the process of being taken away. Um, all, they said that they were, they were extremely um, appreciative of um, the Israeli activists who came there every Friday. Um, the villagers in Berlin uh, work with, with the anarchists, and um, those, are essential, those are essential communities. So um, if the struggle right now is actually a struggle to delegitimate um, uh, uh, a, a violent and brutal regime, then that's where we are in the struggle. And when, when and if the question emerges, um, what would make a, a legitimate mode of governance for that, um, that state, then it seems to me anarchists may have something to say about that, especially in the critique of hierarchy, uh, and perhaps also in thinking about modes of sociability and living together. Um, and um, so, so I, I, I don't think we're there. I don't think we're, we're at that second, that second stage. Uh, bef before you go, Judith, I just want you to hear the appreciation of the audience out here and just, just if you can join me in thanking Judith for doing this. I think they liked it. Yeah, okay. Thanks so Thanks much. Thanks very much. I'll be in touch soon. All right, good luck with the conference. All right, thanks a lot.